So at that point, our black line's gone, which is fine. Um, we're not going to rasp anymore. We're not going to cut it anymore. And then we'd, we'd uh, remark, the, remark the widest part. And then we're going to use we're going to use the multi-max of the TK slider. Widest part of the shoe goes over the widest part of the foot. This is breakover. This is where the heel's in. So basically we're just going to see if this is the right shoe. We can see that the widest part of the foot fits. That breakover works. And that the heels are approximately just slightly back from the plumb line of the bulb of the foot and longer than the heels. So that will be a very good a very good fit for this horse. We could use, this is the narrow one, this would be used for like a working cow horse, ranch horse versatility, calf roping, uh, barrel racing, something that you don't need a lot of slide but you still need the foot to slip in the ground like it's meant to. We could go with the max version of that same shoe, it's the exact same shape, still the widest part of the foot is at the last nail holes, breakover is still where breakover is. This would be more for horses that are reining. Uh, you could use it for your healing horses because they're sliding a lot. The wider the toe, the, more, the slicker the shoe will be, the more it'll slide. But for this horse, she's a, uh, starting out uh, team roping in the healing, and she does a little cow horse stuff. So we want this little bit narrower shoe. The TK Sliders also has a unique design is that it, we keep the heels pretty, pretty narrow so that we don't cover up any of the frog. We don't want to cover up very much of this back part of the frog. This is the part of the frog that has a sensitivity from the, uh, as you all know from the natural balance protocol, uh, the proprioceptors and stuff are in the back one third of the foot. So basically this isn't going to cover it up. But what we do want to talk about is where the heels are in relationship to the rest of the foot. The middle of the bar, the middle of the branch of the heel is here. The heel, if you look at the radius of these two coming to round together, this is kind of hard to show, but as the radius of these two come around, it points to a point up here on the bulb. And these two come around, it points to a point up on the bulb. That's where the heels would converge if they kept coming around at that same angle. Okay, That's an important point because that's a balance point that we need to look at and not a balance point for the heel of the foot as much as it is, is for the lateral cartilage. So when we palpate the lateral cartilage, we can see that the lateral cartilage, you can palpate the proximal end of the lateral cartilage and they come around and they come to a point in the bulb, bulbs just like this. So they actually point to those dots. So I want the heel of this shoe to support the lateral cartilage. By doing that, we're supporting the fibro cartilage of the digital cushion which helps hold the back part of the foot in a more upright position aiding in aiding in the proper alignment of the pastern joint and we'll show how the shoe is shaped to achieve that as we get it shaped after you trim the foot and everything before you shape the shoe and pick one out you would address any kind of dorsal hoof wall flares um, this horse I maintain uh, is one of my own horses so it doesn't have any flares and that's what you want to achieve as you, as you balance the foot. You want to see less and less flares. If you keep consistently seeing flares in a certain area, then the balance, you're not getting the foot balanced as, as good as possible. But you can see that this mare doesn't have any flares. Um, you'd want to address any of the flares, especially some of those you'll see on a hind foot that the medial side is real, will have a big uh, curve inward and the lateral side will actually flare outward. So you'd want to take that flare off here and then try to dress the inside as best as possible so that the shoe will fit on square. If you left the flare sticking out like this, then the shoe would be on crooked and then you would see that the foot would keep wanting to push out. So that's a good sign to look at is what kind of flares are you getting after the horse has been shod for eight or 10 weeks, six weeks, whatever the shoeing cycle is. But this horse, we don't have to do any dressing to, but um, if you do have those, be sure and do them before you shape the shoe so that the shoe will be on the foot more squarely. To save the medial heel on the ground surface, always do that. If, if for some reason that the foot would step on the other foot, it's going to be the medial heel 
the ground surface of the medial heel that's going to do the damage to the other foot as it's being stepped on. We're not trying to prevent the shoe from being stepped off. We're trying to prevent the shoe from hurting the horse if she, if she steps on herself. We're going to put two nails in and then we're going to take a look at the fit of the shoe. We want to make sure that the heels are in the right alignment with the bulbs of the foot and the lateral cartilage and we also want to make sure that we have ample heel length. which ample heel length would be to where the foot is, the pastern angle is in the proper alignment and the heel is no further back than the plumb line of the heel bulb. Helpful hint is that if you look at the angle of the dorsal hoof wall, you want your nail to be parallel to that. So if you'll just lay your nail out there, you can kind of see what that angle is. And if you'll just transpose that over into the hole, you'll get a lot more even nail height and you'll get a lot stronger nail pattern, which the nail pattern also adds to the quality of hoof capsule. If we're constantly getting low nails or nails that aren't in the hoof wall, amply. Um, we get shattered hoof walls. We get the holes cracking all the time and that just adds that just adds to the poor quality of, of the hoof. So just because we're putting nails into the hoof doesn't mean that we have to take away from the strength of the hoof capsule. If we do it properly we can actually add to the strength of it. Always working harmony with the foot and not against it. Now we check for alignment, make sure everything was right after we nailed it. If we go straight down through the middle of the frog, it points to the middle of the shoe, it makes a T. We want that to be square on there. And we can see that the, the heels support those marks that we put on there. If it slides around when you're nailing it, take the time and re-nail it. You'll, you'll be happy with the results when you come back in eight weeks. If you don't take the time while you're doing it, then when you come back in eight weeks, you're going to go, oh my God, who did that? And it's going to be, you're going to be the one to blame. So always take a little bit of time, you know, always have the have the awareness that if I did something wrong, go ahead and adjust it then. It's a lot easier to adjust then than after you get it all done and go, well, I can't adjust it now, I'm already done. Take your time, take a look, make sure, put your two nails in there, make sure everything's lined up. If it is, then go ahead and nail it, and then you'll be really happy with your results when you come back to do her again.